If you're going to gain access to resources on a network somewhere, then you're going to need to identify yourself and authenticate yourself. And these are two different things. Identification is the idea of taking a particular user and associating them with an action. It's something that occurs before login and after login, but it's a way to track to really know who's doing what on the network. The authentication piece is proving that a user is who they say that they are. If you're simply allowed any access you want on the network without somebody asking you for a passphrase or requiring that you have a smart card installed into your machine, then you could be anybody. So we need this authentication process to make sure we know who's using the network and what they're doing. And there's an entire access control process built around all of this. We need to prove a user is who they say they are. We'll prompt them with a password. We'll make sure that the authorization and that we are validating them getting onto this network work on using those resources, then we need to prove that user is who they are so that we can track what they're doing and watch as they perform the different actions on the network. We call that non-repudiation, which means you can't deny that that was you. It was your username. You're the only one who has the password. Maybe you're the only person who has that two-factor authentication that got you on the network. So from that point on, that has to be you. And there's no way you can deny that happening. To facilitate this identification and authorization process, everyone is usually given a username. This username is just a set of characters that represents who we are as we're logging into the network. On my network, maybe I log in as J Messer, my first initial and my last name. Behind the scenes, and this is true in Windows and other operating systems as well, I'm also associating that username of JMesser with something called a security ID, which is a very unique ID. It's something very specific, and nobody else can have that security ID other than me at this particular time. And I might leave the organization. If I leave the organization, they may delete my account. They may disable it. It may no longer be in the system. And let's say a year later, somebody starts in the organization whose name is Judy Messer, and they are also given the ID of J Messer because now it's available. But they're going to have a different security ID. So if you were to look at logs from a year ago and logs from now, you may still see J Messer as a username, but behind the scenes, you're administrators are going to be able to go and look at the exact security identifiers associated with those to be sure that each of those accounts is unique. Not only are we providing a username, but we're also providing some type of credentials. We need to provide a password. We need to perhaps have a smart card with us that we slide into our computer to prove that we're right there in front of the system. Maybe we also have to type in a PIN to make sure that we are who we say we are. So not only are we asking for a name of someone, we want to know a little bit more information so that we can really authenticate who that might be. There will be, obviously, a profile associated with you on the network. It's not just going to be your username and your password, your directory services are going to have information about what groups you belong to, what building you might be in, your physical address of where you might be located, phone numbers, and other contact information. So we have all of this combined together into our directory services. So if we need to look at your record and see Jay Messer, we can learn more about who that might be and understand more about the rights and permissions they might need on the network. I've worked in many different organizations, and obviously I needed a way to get access to the network when I started working there. And depending on the organization, there may be a number of different processes that are involved at getting that user ID. It may be that you have to prove who you are. You have to go to a single room and talk to a person and give them some identification, and they give you an ID, and they put your system, your name in the system so that you can log into the network. In other organizations, I just fill out a form, and I send it in. Nobody ever called me. Nobody ever talked to me. They just trusted whatever I put on that form was legitimate. So different organizations will have different ways to prove the identity of who you are. Are. There may even be background checks, there may be record checks, there may be some other way to do this. But if you're trying to track and make sure you know what's going on in the network, you obviously need some very stringent processes in place so you can be sure when you provide access that you're really providing the access to the people who need it. When you're creating accounts as well, you need to be careful about how you're creating those accounts. You don't want to create dummy accounts. You don't want to create just a bunch of accounts and hand them out as you go. You want to create them one at a time. And they need to be given to real people. Sometimes the bad guys get accounts because you have people internally 
building a special account or service account just for somebody to use, maybe temporarily. It's not a good idea, certainly not a best practice. There also needs to be controls and oversight of this. You don't want to have one person with all of the control. Maybe one person receives the information about creating the accounts. Another person actually creates the accounts. And then maybe a final person approves that so that you can't have one person giving access to people on the network who really should not be providing that access. You now need to be careful about getting those new credentials back to the end user. There have been places I've worked where I've simply received a message that said, here's your name and your password. Your username is jmesser. Your password is password. And they just use password for every new account. This becomes an issue. What if I started work there, I got an account, and then somebody logged in as me before I got there because they knew they're just going to put the default dummy password in for every single account. Or what if an account is made for someone and they never log in, I could use their login name and gain access to the network because I know their first password would be password. Even though you're required to change it after the first login, it's still there and waiting for that very first login. And that gives people access to that account and to your network. You want to be very careful about your passwords and the way they're exploited inside of your organization. You don't want to send them out in the clear. Maybe you must talk to them on the phone to provide that information. Maybe they have to stop by your desk where you will have them log in at your computer and change their password in front of you so you can be sure that that's what's happening. All these processes work together to ensure that our identification and our authorization process is going to work as securely as possible.